Good morning, guys, and welcome to the third leg of our ferry flight down to Barcelona from uh, Shoreham. Hope you're doing well. Um, this is going to be an interesting part. It's quite a long leg in comparison to most of the other journeys. Um, we're flying from the 2K all the way down to Le Havre, which is about 80, well, not about, it is 84 nautical miles. Um, so it should take, I guess, about, I'm guessing about 45 minutes, <coughs> give or take. So, um, so yeah, let's jump right into the cockpit and get the show on the road. So this is obviously the 2K. And did I leave the door open? I did. Hopefully no, nobody's stolen anything, which is uh, good. Let's just close that and pause it. And the weather looks ooh, a bit dodgy, but not not the end of the world. So uh, we'll we'll see how this pans out. I'm going to use my checklist. I've decided, I've made a conscious decision to use the checklist as much as possible. So I'm just going to get this show on the road. I'm just going to move this slightly closer and I'm going to try not to talk uh, anywhere other than into the microphone. So brakes are on, uh, master battery switches on, our strobe lights go on, voltage check, uh, mixture is full rich. And our power lever goes to full. Oops, yeah. And then our fuel pump goes on. Uh, prop area clear, which it is. Our throttle comes back to a quarter of an inch open. Then we can go ahead and start the engine. Power lever back to a thousand RPM. there. Uh, let's see, mixture lean for ground operations. Oil pressure check. Master switches all on. Avionics switch on. Engine parameters are monitored. Disconnect external power not relevant, etc. So that is our before store engine start checklist. Um, our before taxi checklist is flaps up, cabin heat on defrost, we won't worry about that right now. Um, fuel selector is on the left tank, that's completely fine. Uh, radio set, that's not relevant to us. Um, turn coordinator check, yep, that's all good. So, we are ready to taxi out. I am going to set up the autopilot, we're going to climb out to about not about, we're going to go to 10,000 feet because I really want to get above this cloud and I'm going to set a vertical speed of 1400 and then we'll just put it on our heading select for when we uh, are ready to taxi. So, taxi lights on um, and we'll taxi on out for the runway. Okay, right, the other thing we're going to do, just for fun, no other reason at all, is we're going to attempt a short field um, takeoff. And all that really means is that instead of, um, this thing will take off without any flaps in most conditions. In fact, that's normal takeoff procedure. So we're, all a short takeoff means is, is that we go to 50% flap, and our rotation speed is still 70 knots, but obviously, um, we is it me or are we getting kind of twitchy jerky kind of movements I'm going to just um, try something here guys and see if it makes any difference I'm just going to bear with me I'm going to try limiting my frames I think we're getting a good frame rate. So I'm going to try just limiting it to 30 and see if that just stops that stuttering. 
Uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so we're basically just checking for any traffic. I do have traffic enabled um, through uh, Ultimate Traffic 2. Okay, our landing lights come on. Our pit at heat comes on. And I'm going to go with some de-icing as well because it is cold. And we are going up through that cloud. So um, we've got to be careful. So a quick, a quick last check. See if there's anything on final approach. Our flaps will be set to 50% for our short field takeoff. And I'm trying desperately not to stop. Damn, every time. I find it so difficult to taxi. It's all about the brake control, really. Okay, that's pretty good. Lined up. Uh, I'm going to set my heading bug to runway heading. Let me just go through the before takeoff checklist. Doors and lap doors are latched. Uh, handles pinned out. Uh, safety bolts and harnesses secure. Fuel pump to deconfirmed, which we have. Fuel pump to low, low boost. Mixture needs to go to full rich which I would have forgotten about. 50% um, flaps and checked, which they are. Transponder is set, it's not relevant. Autopilot is set up, as are the navigation, radios, etc. Cabin heat on defrost, brakes hold. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so alternator, so the picture heat is on, nav lights are on. Um, <coughs> landing light is on, annunciator lights. Uh, cabin lights as required. Uh, uh, flight instruments check and set, which they are. Trim is set for takeoff, but it is. There we go. That's pretty much it. Okay, so we're looking for a rotation speed of 70 knots, and our flaps will come up at 80 knots. So this is our short field takeoff. There's my dog Luna going slightly mental. Airspeed is alive. 70 knots. Oh, we're pushing it fine. Oh dear. A little bit dodgy. Okay, rotate. Whoops. And flaps up. Yeah, okay. So, I didn't uh, give us the most stress free take off there. Never mind. Okay, so we'll climb out to a thousand and as we do that we'll turn on to our heading. And um, basically it's quite windy. <laughs> she could probably hear. But you know it is what it is. So most of this journey is across sea, hence why we're going up to 10,000 feet in this. Um, so, but I'm going to build up a little bit of speed before we initiate the climb. So I'm going to, I'm, so I'm trimming out for the straight and level, which will increase our As I do that, I'm just selecting the uh, buttons and I'm changing my heading to roughly match the heading to the half. So that's all set up. We've got a good amount of speed, so I'm going to engage the autopilot and just check my vertical speed. Yeah, that's fine. And here we go. So we'll start our just start our ascent. But yeah, pretty windy conditions. I um, hope I don't spill my coffee.
Okay, so our fuel pump comes off once we reach cruise altitude. Let's have a little look over the wing here. Yep, definitely getting buffeted around. It's going to be an interesting flight, that's for sure. Obviously, when you're passing any or flying over any long stretches of water, you want to go as high as you can as long as it's safe. So that, you know, if the, if, if, I was going to say if the inevitable happens, but it very rarely happens. If you do have any engine problems, then um, then you, you, you you've got uh, you've got room to play with. You've got enough time to uh, assess the situation. And wowzers, we really, really are getting thrown about. We're starting to okay. Well, we're we're going we're going into the cloud. Hold on to your hats. And we've got some traffic there. The Beechcraft, King Air, nine miles away at 15,000. So that's not a threat at all. So he's up there. So we should be okay, even if it is a bit bumpy. This is, of course, a smaller aircraft, but it's more modern. Um, and then, you know, hopefully more stable. I don't know if that's true or not. So we just kind of sit this weather out and hope that it's clearer and calmer up there. We are going to track this um, this line, but we're going to stay stay closer to the uh, to the coast. Again, more for safety reasons. We don't really want to be ditching in the uh, channel this time of the year, or indeed any time of the year. down a little bit. Now we're going to need to put oxygen on, so I might just start pressurizing the cabin now. So we're going up to 10,000, which is significant. Ideally you would uh, turn the heat on, but it's too loud for us, so we'll assume the cabin is nice and uh, cozy. I think if we didn't have any heat on, the reality would be slightly different, but Okay. All right. So we're in the thick of it, quite literally. Complete IFR conditions. So we just monitor our gauges, make sure everything looks good, which touch wood at the moment it does. start to lean out the engine. I'm going to have to come over here to do it. I don't know why I haven't set up my... Uh, okay, that'll do for now. Yeah, I need to set up my throttle quadrant to uh, take care of that, really. Okay, so it's getting a bit lighter, so I'm hoping we're coming to the top of these clouds. Flying the cloud is completely and utterly disorientating, which is why you have to really focus on here rather than what's outside. Although, we will have a quick look. I can see... I don't know, maybe not. I thought I could see the ground a little bit, but no. But I can see space around us, and that's always a good sign that we're, we're kind of in between clouds. Um, go. We'll see. 10,000 feet might not be enough, uh, in which case we can we can go higher. Why not? Let's live a little. So, when we get up to cruise altitude, I'm going to talk about, um, you know, the stuff that I've got that makes this setup work, basically. Um, oh, sorry, one second, guys. All right. Um, 
Yeah, because I'm, I'm really interested in, in how people fly in their own homes. Um, you know, what setup they've got, how they make it as immersive as possible. And I'm not particularly a frugal person, um, and uh, dig the reference there. Uh, but, I mean, I love Frugal's videos, don't get me wrong. I'm talking about Frugal in terms of uh, spending money. When it comes to flight simming, um, I've set this thing up with a relatively, uh, I don't know, inexpensive, I don't know, I, w I wouldn't say inexpensive because it's, you know, as you all know, it's not uh, a cheap hobby because that you've got to buy so much stuff. Um, so, you know, the computer alone, you're looking at quite a bit of uh, cash for that. And then of course, um, I've gone with, really, I would call these budget flight simming devices. Um, SciTech, not to say they're not good, but SciTech panels, SciTech, uh, everything SciTech basically. And um, I think they're fantastic for the price, I really do. The downside is that they're plastic, they don't sort of look or feel like the real thing, but they do the job and it's a step away from using your mouse in inside the virtual cockpit. So the level of immersion is greatly um, improved, I think, even though the switches and knobs and everything does, doesn't really look like any particular plane. But that's also an advantage because like me, I fly um, lots of different aircraft, not just uh, single engines, but twins and also jets as well. So for someone like that who wants a general sort of setup, um, I think it's I think it's fantastic, and you can pick up um, the I've I've got two at the moment. I do want to get the uh, the radio panels. That is on my Christmas list, <laughs> um, and I've also got two quad, quad, throttle quadrants, which I think is useful. I think you can pick these up for about I think I paid 40, 40 pounds on uh, eBay for a second throttle quadrant. Really, really useful. Um, and the rudder pedal is about £120, I think. The yoke is about the same. These are about £100 each, give or take £10. Um, and then, of course, you can get the six pack, which is fantastic. I'm, uh, by the way, I'm just for the record, I'm not at all uh, affiliated with SciTech. I just believe in, in, in their products and making flight simming uh, accessible. If I had an unlimited budget for this hobby, um, I would probably invest in uh, Yoko the Yoke, for example, and go down that route and, um, you know, make that more substantial. But I just don't feel the need to spend that kind of crazy money right now. Maybe I will at some point, but right now, this is good. I've got three monitors. You don't have to have that at all. Uh, three monitors means you do have to have a good graphics card. Uh, at least a 10, a 1070, 1080 would be ideal. Um, but the 1070 handles three monitors pretty well. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, talked about hardware. Oh, I have got possibly one of the cheapest add-ons to my setup that I think offers the most immersive experience. And I'm not going to talk about what that is in this video. I'm going to save that for the halfway point of this trip. Um, but it truly is. And I, I'm talk, so I'm talking in terms of money. I'm talking £50. Pounds, and I'm talking uh, the level of immersion that it adds is absolutely incredible. I, can't, I, I really can't reiterate that uh, enough. So I'll talk about that. It's two items that work together. And I'll talk about that in, a, in another video. So I've just noticed we've reached cruise altitude, but we're not. We're still at, in clouds. So I'm going to just see what happens. We'll, we'll go up to uh, twelve thousand. Let's go up to thirteen thousand. I'd like to some, and we'll just see what that that does. Whether that brings us out of the cloud or not. So leaving my taxi lights can come off. I suppose our fuel pump can now come off. Everything else stays on. Just see if that uh, takes us um, out of the cloud. Hopefully it will. If not, then we'll just have to sit inside this bubble, which is 
no big deal. So yeah, just, just continuing on our little chat. Hardware is, of course, only one um, aspect. There we go, we think we're breaking the top now. Um, you've got the software, you've got all the scenery, you've got all the aircraft. Um, it adds up, let me tell you. I, I dread to think how much I've spent on software alone. But again, you know, it's if you want that immersive experience, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do. Highly recommend Orbex scenery. Really do. It is harsh on frames, um, especially for some reason. The UK uh, Orbex England scenery seems to be pretty, for some reason, really tough on my system. So I've actually disabled that. I actually I love the way it looks, but it just gives me ridiculous frames. You know, sometimes single figures, even with this PC. So, um, so yeah. I avoid that at all costs. And here we are, poking through the top of some rather beautiful clouds. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Highly recommend Active Sky Next with Cloud Art. This is the result. Absolutely gorgeous. And I think incredibly realistic, especially when you uh, come through them. I'm not, I'm not too sure about some of the cloud effects sort of bubbling of the uh, cloud. I, I'm not sure they've got that quite right, but it's it's a step in the right direction, it really is. Really, really good stuff. So, yes, um, what else am I going to talk about? I guess peripherals. Um, I've got, I'll tell you what, this thing here, this ridiculous keyboard, I don't know if you can see that in the webcam. This is made by uh, Moobomb, slightly bizarre name. It's a fully mechanical keyboard, and it is less than 50 pounds, and it does all sorts of crazy lights. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing, I'm not particularly, but you know, it's quite fun. Um, oh, that's what I'm talking about. There we go, cloud effects on the windshield. Not sure that works particularly well, but anyway. Um, yeah, I think actually this was less than forty pounds. I believe I, I've only just got it. I should remember how much it is. Thirty-eight, thirty-nine, something like that. But if you're in the market for a mechanical keyboard, highly, highly recommend it. I think it looks really cool. So it's kind of like a brushed copper sort of effect. It feels fantastic. Um, I've never, I've never used a mechanical keyboard before. Um, so, but there's no comparison once you once you've used one gaming, not just for gaming, but for typing, you know, it, it really is fantastic, you just get this lovely feedback. I've also got this, um, gaming mouse, again, really, really budget stuff, it's by a company called uh, TechNet, and this was less than £20, and superb, again, the mouse that I had before was too bog standard, you know, I had a bottom of the range, or well, not quite bottom of the range, but you know, standard range, let's say, Logitech keyboard and mouse set. So this is, you know, really, really going up a level and not breaking the bank at all. Simple little things like this, which is just a, an iPhone or a phone stand. But if you've got checklists, it's really handy stuff. Four pounds, I think, Amazon. Looks quite nice, been, been made really well, etc. You know, it's the little things that really do uh, make a difference. I honestly can't wait to share uh, this um, 50 pound add-on, hardware add-on, uh, that is <coughs> really, really incredibly immersive. I, I, I'm not using it right now, um, but I will when when we uh, do that video, that halfway point, and we'll, we'll, we'll check out which flight that is gonna be. It's gonna be six or seven, flight six or seven, whatever, wherever that will take us. We'll, we'll, we'll check out at the end. Um, Okay, I'm going to lean out a little bit more, just to give us a bit more power. And then I'm going to come back off the throttle. I've been yakking away and uh, forgotten to take care of things. So this, that's kind of my, that's as far as my fuel management goes. <laughs> um, but it really does matter when you're, when you're ferry flying. Look at that, absolutely 
stunning. Gorgeous. So our landing lights can come off at this point. Everything else stays on. Even though we're not in cloud, we could, I suppose I could turn the de-icing off. I think I will. Uh, that'll do. Oh, another thing. I'll talk about these. Um, wireless Bluetooth uh, headphones. I'll show you what I had before. Um, these things here. These are really great. I, I, the only reason for getting um, these was because I wanted um, wireless. Uh, yeah, Plantronics. They're a fantastic company. They make really, really good um, headphones uh, from the budget sort of range way up there to, you know, three, four hundred pounds. Maybe not that much, but certainly three hundred. Um, but again, I just want to share these with you because I got these are, oh, let me just check, Eon Fine. I've never heard of them, but I got them from Amazon. Um, they are noise cancelling. They are the most incredible sound, um, and I have had some Bose headphones, uh, top of the range Bose in the past, I broke them, um, uh, and they are, I have to say, comparable to, to the Bose, they really, really are, I'm not just saying that. These were £60, and like I said, they've got noise cancelling, the range on them is pretty good, they are really comfortable. So again, if, uh, if you're in the market for some, um, you know, again, budget Bluetooth uh, headphones, highly, highly, highly recommend these. The sound is second to none. Um, I was amazed for that price range, I really was. Uh, I did have to buy a Bluetooth um, dongle for my PC as this doesn't have Bluetooth, but again, that was eight pounds or something. Uh, but it works like an absolute charm. Sorry about that. Um, my hard drive ran out of space. Um, it happens. So, I can't remember what I was saying, but... Uh, oh, I'm still harping on about these amazing headphones. But honestly, they really are, really are good. Um, so, I guess what I'm saying, you know this already, but you don't have to buy top-of-the-range stuff in order to get similar and sometimes better performance, you know. Um, so it's well worth doing your research. I spend a lot, if I'm buying something, I spend a lot of time on YouTube, checking out reviews, a lot of time on Amazon. It doesn't necessarily mean I buy it from Amazon, but I check um, reviews and, you know, just make sure that A, I definitely need it, B, that the quality is going to serve what I need it for, and it's built to last, etc. you know. Sometimes I buy stuff not because I don't not because I don't need it, but because I want it. So, for example, today I think I'm about to buy uh, the i the Apple iWatch. I don't need that. I really don't. I've got an Apple. I've got an iPhone 6 Plus. I don't need that at all. But I kind of want it, and I don't know why. They look cool. Look at that. That looks stunning. Speaking of looking. So yeah, okay, we've got a bit of traffic ahead at 7,000. Cherokee, how is a Cherokee, how is a Piper Cherokee at nearly 8,000 feet? They must have oxygen on there. Uh, I don't know, anyway, going into a bit of cloud here. when the 
passengers in the back start to get a bit nervous, get blown around. It's perfectly fine, folks, nothing to worry about. Perfectly safe. feeling in that Cherokee. They're up to 8,000 feet now. A little bit of weather. I'm just going to have a little look out this window because I think that looks pretty damn cool. Nice. Let's just, should we get in the back? Let's have a go in the back, shall we? That is what our passengers are looking at. Nice. Pretty, pretty nice. And the back of my head. <laughs> Let's have a look out this side. It's like a car though, isn't it? Gorgeous. This would definitely be a, a Porsche 911. I mentioned that in the last video, if it was a car. six miles out and we're at 13,000 feet so we want a nice gentle descent we don't want a crazy uh, I've left everything to the last minute kind of thing and the same with the landing we're, we're gonna fly straight in um, we're not gonna do a circuit uh, I've decided so let me just get the, ch the checklist the descent checklist here um, so We'll go through this. We'll start our descent now, I think. So altimeter set, um, cabin heat defrost, landing light goes on, fuel system checked, power as required, mixture as required, brake pressure check, oxygen as required. Uh, okay, all done, all fine. I'm not gonna do a rapid descent, which is the checklist after that. So, we're gonna ease back on the power down to about 30%. take. We're just going to let that speed come down before we start our descent. And get this ready here. So we're going to go down to 4,000 feet. Well, we'll go down to 3,600 feet and set our vertical speed at 1,200. So we've started our descent down into Le Havre. Into a bit of cloud, there's that Cherokee again. Is he following us a lot? So this might well get a bit bumpy, so seatbelt signs on. it could be raining and it's not raining at the destination right now so that is good what I am going to do um, in the next video because I'm thinking when I fly uh, without recording <coughs> I always always use three monitors and I stretch it across it's just so much more immersive um, I can't do that when I'm recording uh, stuff because um, the image would look weird and stretched um, so what I'm going to do is utilize the monitors for weather and charts and stuff so as we go along I'm hoping things will get a bit more in detail in terms of the actual flying um, that's the idea anyway 
I mean, this is this is a great plane because we do have the moving map up here. But um, you know, ch for charts and weather and things like that, we could even have a moving map working as well, showing you all the towns that we go over. That would be kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to expedite our descent slightly. We'll come back off the power even more. And as we're doing that, uh, I'm just checking my core landing checklist. So, sea belts and harness is secured. Fuel pump to low boost. Fuel selector will go to the fullest tank. Mixture goes to full rich. Um, we need to adjust that as we descend, I think. Just to avoid us. I'll tell you what. I'm going to put that to full ridge now. Um, let's see. Flaps as required. Autopilot as required. We're flying straight in, so pretty much as soon as we get down to a sensible altitude, I'll disconnect the autopilot and we'll, we'll, we'll hand fly it in, of course. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Sorry to keep saying that, but wow. It looks real. Okay, so descending down nicely. We're going to cut the end, not cut the engine, but I'm going to turn the power completely to idle. So we're now 15 miles out, and we've still got, oh, not too bad, a good amount of uh, time to go. I just hope that this cloud base isn't too low, and that we can actually land in Le Havre. I guess we should, I guess our second choice would be EFRG, which is here. So we'll see what the weather's like, hopefully we won't have to do that. Hopefully, we won't have to divert. I think we should be okay. I'm going to change our altitude now down to 1800. So, landing lights are on, strobe, nav, beacon, that's all on. Our de ice will go on, I believe. I believe icing is simulated with Active Sky Next. So again, it is cold and we are going through um, cloud. So always a good idea. Even if it's not raining. Even if you can't see precipitation. Obviously clouds are water. And at this altitude, at this temperature, that could be an issue. Okay. I'm going to just speed up Still, still within a comfortable range, 22. here so I'm a little bit worried about this altitude uh, we'll soon be approaching let's see fingers crossed we can see land down there oh dear let's go down to 1400 that oh thank the Lord that was pretty close. <laughs> that is a beautiful sight. 
really is absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Right, we should, the autopilot should level us out now, 1400 feet. Our airspeed will start to bleed off pretty quickly. And we are ready to touch down. So the airfield is pretty much straight ahead. Quite straight ahead. We're going to hand fly. Oops. Now. Oh, damn, it really is quite windy. So trimming out, trying to stabilize. Should have perhaps checked trim settings and all that good stuff before disconnecting the autopilot. There we are. Okay. I said we were going to fly straight in, but actually we're, we've not, because I was talking, we haven't followed the magenta line properly. Um, this is bringing us in over the town, which is kind of cool from a sightseeing perspective, but we'll have to just see because the runway kind of ru runs this way so we'll see Estimated how windy it really is. In fact, I'm just gonna take the stress out of it a little bit until we get closer. about that notifications and things going off all right so there we are there's the uh, we'll, we'll fly over the airfield and we'll do uh, left hand we'll come in at supposed to come in at 45 degrees into the circuit and then join the circuit and then, you know but yeah won't worry too much about that can't see any traffic around so I'm sure ATC would have said join the circuit and uh, fly straight in we'll see the landing is going to be interesting. There were, there are, just uh, obviously with any aircraft, there are crosswind limits. Um, I'm not going to look at them. We're just, gonna, we're just going to do it and hope for the best. the tower at this point, obviously say we're overhead, it's intentions to land, and we'll start our very gentle left hand turn into the circuit pattern
that's kind of nice. I like that. The view. Let me turn the frames off. For me, when I'm landing, I, all distractions <laughs> are potential hazards. Okay. too far but that's okay we'll, we'll figure it out so again you know I like to give myself as much time as much take away all the pressure and uh, just, you know go out a good amount before turning back, turning on to what would be the base leg, I suppose. Well, let's do that now. Should be It's about there, isn't it? My mass is correct. Right, so we go one stage of flap. And let's connect the autopilot. Trimming. And turning on to final. And we're not gonna we're not gonna turn out perfectly here. I guarantee it. That's okay. We've got plenty of time to line up. And this aircraft is very nimble indeed. So we're low. We are definitely low, that's for sure. Um, okay, we'll go full flat now. Increasing the power a bit. Need to get on that glide slope. And we're flying directly into the wind, so it looks like we're going nowhere fast, but we're getting there. drastic about this now. Okay. Not an easy landing at all. Not even down yet. So landing lights, seatbelts, harnesses, just a quick very last check. Fuel pump goes on. They're way too high. Scary stuff. <laughs> Virtually at full left l rudder. So we're crabbing in like a, a crab, really. Still too high, but we've got loads of runway, so I'm not too worried about that. And let's just make Try not to take the undercarriage off when we land. That was too much of a flare, but anyway. And we are down. Okay. All right, we'll clean up. Lights go on, landing lights go off. Bit of a dodgy landing. I think perhaps that we exceeded the 
might be wrong. I think we might have exceeded the uh, crosswind component of the aircraft because that was pretty. Uh, I, I tried to kick the rudder out at the very last minute and it just didn't do anything. So I think that means that the winds were gusting too much for the aircraft to handle. I don't know. I'll look into that. But anyway, we're here. Welcome to Le Havre. And uh, it's a really nice spot right next to the control tower. So I think we'll park there. Very blustery day in northern France today. I don't know if you noticed the uh, kind of jerkiness on final. I don't know. I need to check that out. I'm not used to that. And it's kind of weird and very off putting. Anyway. We're here. Let's do the shutdown. So, avionics switch goes off. Fuel pump is off. Uh, throttle to idle, which it is. Mixture can go to cut off, which will shut the engines down. All switches off. Lights and uh, ignition and mags go to off. Parking brake set, should have done that before. Master battery switch off. And finally, open the door. Welcome to La Havre. It's a bit chilly out, but here we are in one piece. Not a scratch on this beautiful aircraft. And I hope the tower are happy. They're having a bit of a disco up there or something. Um, and here we are. So. That was, uh, I, I hope it was an interesting flight for you. It certainly was for me. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, as ever, please uh, like and subscribe. Please share if you think other people might be interested in my videos. That would be wonderful. Um, and as always, comment, you know, please tell me if I'm doing stuff wrong. I know I am. Um, tell me about your setups, you know, anything you think I can add to mine would be great. At some point, I'll do a, I'll do a, uh, kind of walk around of, of everything but um but until the next video guys i hope you've enjoyed it and uh i'll see you very soon in the next flight let's just uh show you what we're doing so i'm just going to pause this here so we're currently here and we'll be flying up to Cherbourg uh in the next video it's a relatively short flight in comparison so only 61 nautical miles across this large body of water water here um, but again, we've got some interesting, um, it's right on the coast. So we've got some incredibly interesting, uh, weather sort of, you know, cr crosswinds, um, uh, on, on this particular airfield. So, uh, I'll be checking out the chart for that and, um, our next stop then, I'm wondering actually. The other plan that I had was to fly from here to Jersey and then Jersey to Dinard. I don't know. We'll, we'll have a think. We'll have a think. Maybe we'll keep it the same. But anyway, that is the plan. We are making our way slowly but surely down to sunny Spain. So thanks again, guys, for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. All right. Take care.